Green Seal City. Is everybody ready to go? Let's proclaim the greatest radio show. Welcome, fans, to another great edition of The Spread. I am your host, Jim Sella, in studio with J Dash and JK47. You loaded today, 47? You carrying? That's in the car. Man, if somebody breaks into the studio, we're all done. I'll fight them off with my bare knife. Well, today we're going to tackle some ALDH, correct, Dash? Correct. Some hard work this week, or did you just throw this together in five seconds? No, I worked on this day and night, 24-7. Seven I'm, days a week. I'm a slow typer, as you can see. <laughs> well, let's get it started. We're going to start at 15, roll to number one. Who do you got at number 15? At number 15, he, he's a pretty good player, Kendrys Morales. He's 31 years old, playing for the Royals this year. He played for Seattle and Minnesota last season. Between the two, he hit 218 with a 274 on base, 8 jacks, 42 RBIs, 28 runs, 27 walks, 68 Ks, and 367 at-bats. Now, was it this offseason or last offseason there were rumors of him possibly signing with the Pirates? It was rumors uh, at the beginning of last season, but that's all it was because he can't play the field. He's terrible on the field. Right. He's just the DH pretty much. Was that much. near a playoff run? Was that no, it was at the beginning of the season, okay. I believe. He I'm, is the first baseman. Yeah. You think he could play first base, uh, 47? Right now, not so sure. You know, You're I welcome, mean, then. he's a year removed over missing half a season. You know, I mean, he was of course uh, stuck in that free agent dispute. He didn't play at all in 2011 either. And look, he's had more than 367 at bats just three times since his rookie year in 2006. So he's not going to be able to be out there a full season. Right. So he's garbage, then, and it's a good thing we didn't get him. Even though you know, all he has to do is swing the bat four or five times a game. And his homers are down a little bit. He's hit 22 or more home runs three times between 2009 and 2013. He had a career high 34 in 2009, but just 8 and 367 at bats last year. Now he's starting to get a little bit older, though, and having trouble catching those fastballs early on in the count. Well, let's move on to number 14. Deoner Navarro from the Blue Jays. He's 31, too. Now, last season was pretty much a career year for him. He hit 274 with a 317 on base, 12 jacks, 69 RBIs, 40 runs. He had 32 walks and 76 Ks and 481 at bats. Well, this guy's a former All Star, you know, whatever he played in Tampa Bay. I mean, he has a little bit of pop in his stick. You know, he'll drive in some runs. You know, playing in the, uh, the Toronto Blue Jays lineup isn't going to hurt either. The 481 at-bats last season was a career high. Yeah, so it was the 69 RBIs. So, I mean, maybe this is a guy who's going to uh, produce regularly, you know, getting to swing the bat. Well, if you look, in 2013, he had a career high 13 jacks, and his average w went up over the past couple of years, so he's actually looking like a better hitter these days. He definitely so is. He's, he's ascending as he gets older, as Morales is descending. But he's played for a bunch of teams. Outside of the Blue Jays, he played for them last season, and get, this year he's going to be playing for them. But he played for the Yankees, Dodgers, the Rays, the Reds, and the Cubs. But the problem with him, too, is he's played in 89 games or less seven times in his 11-year career. But, again, now that he's uh, going to be the DH, it might actually help him out, and he's going to start getting 450 at-bats to 500 at-bats a season. Hey, next up, number 13, Nick Swisher. My main team, the Indians. The Tribe. 34 years old now. Terrible season last year. Absolutely horrendous. I mean, this is a guy who's Swisher usually... had a bad season last year? Oh, he's been, for the most part, with the exception of the last season or two, he's been pretty much consistent throughout his whole career. I mean, he's he never really hit for much of an average to begin with. Still has some pop, though. I mean, for him, it's a matter of being healthy. Well, yeah, look, just 208 last year, 278 on base, eight home runs, 42 RBIs, and 33 runs. His walk rate wasn't terrible, 36 walks. But look, the eight home runs last year, he can actually get that back up. Between 2005 and 2013, he's had 21 or more home runs. So he's only a year removed from having 20-plus home runs. He was a position player early in his career, correct? Yeah, he was an outfielder. I think he played a little bit of first base, too. I was going to say the same thing, yes. I know more about baseball than you give me credit for. No, no, I disagree. Well, you give me no credit at all, so if I know anything, then that's more than what you give me credit for. Ryan Howard. 
But he's going to open the season on the 15-day DL. They got a couple guys they could play there. Maybe David Murphy or Mike Avias get some at-bats until Swisher returns. Carlos Santana could get some at-bats at DH. Brandon Moss, maybe. I don't know. I'm not big on Swisher. Let's move on to number 12. Number 12, you got what, Mitch Moreland. Is that how you say his name? Mitch Moreland. Mitch Moreland from the Texas Rangers. Hit 246 last year with a 297 on base. Absolute garbage as far as home runs go with two. He did only have 167 at bats, but still, you got to look for maybe like six, seven. Come on, man. Well, listen, he had 23 jacks in 2013, so he does have some power, but he only hit 232 that year, had a 299 on base. You want something better than that. 43 Ks and 167 at bats is kind of high, though, right? Yeah, a little high. That's around 25% of your bats, a little over that, actually, so that is a little too high. But the, in 2012, he hit 275, had a 321 on base, so he was a little better. His power was a little bit lower. He had 15 jacks that season. He's never scored more than 60 runs or had more than 60 RBIs in a season. So he's not that great of a player, but he does have power. He's only 29 years old. When you think of Mitch Moreland, don't you think he's older than that? I swear that guy's been around forever, but he hasn't been. He's been around for a little bit. I don't know who the hell he is. So <laughs> You like Mitch Moreland, right, JK? I mean, guy can hit the ball at the ballpark. I mean, I think the two hoop runs was a little bit of a... Yeah, I think he he was injured. He yeah. missed most of the season with an ankle injury. So if he gets back and healthy, that power got to go up a little bit at least. I think so. I mean, it's definitely a hitter's ballpark down there too. I mean, it's a matter of him just seeing the baseball. I mean, the 12 walks, though, not a very good. Yeah, it's not terrible. You look, he had just 167 at-bats. Yeah. So, I mean, there's uh, a reason he's number 12 on the list. Yeah, I mean, he could, Nick Swisher could have a better season than him, Navarro could, even Morales. Morales has had good seasons in the past. All these guys, any order you want to put them in, this is just the order I put them in. Let's go to number 11, John Jasa, another guy that's 31 years old, playing for the Rays. He played for the A's last season and in 2013. Last year with the A's, he hit 264, had a 337 on base, hit nine jacks and 307 at bats, so he showed a little bit of pop. 40 RBIs, 42 runs, took 28 walks, and had 60 Ks. Those walks were actually down, though. He, in most years, he has an elite walk rate. One thing I'm noticing with your list here, Dash, is there's only two guys that are 25 or younger, and it looks like, what, maybe four four guys that are even under 30. So that just goes to show that usually early in your career, you're not wasted on the DH position. Oh, no. There's but once you lose there. it in the field, you know, you still got it at the plate. Boom, there's a position for you. And a lot of these guys are going to play uh, a little bit on the field. Like Morales, yeah. he might see a game at first base. Navarro can catch. Swisher, you might see him in the outfielder at first. Moreland plays some first. Jaso can catch. He's going to be playing some catcher this year. What do you think A-Rod gets on, on third base at 39 years old? No, I think first base. They've actually been playing him at first base in the spring. But let's talk about Jaso real quick, and then we'll get to this number 10 bum. Anything you want to say about JSO 47? You're pretty much going to get what you see out of JSO. I mean, he'll, uh, he'll give you a little bit of pop. You know, look for a dozen or so home runs for him. You know, he'll, of course, uh, spell the everyday catcher every once in a while. Yeah, so, listen, I mean, he's had, I think his career high was 10 home runs. He hit nine last year, like I said, in 307 at bats. He's never had th more than 339 at bats in a season because he's been mostly catching. Now that he's with the Rays, they're going to be playing him at DH. Maybe he can get 450 to 500 bats, get up around 15 home runs, and if he can get his walk rate back to what it was before last season, look, a couple years ago, he had a 394 on base percentage. That's huge. You have 15 jacks and get on base almost 40% of the time. I mean, that's pretty nice out of your, well, I guess not out of a DH, but out of a catcher. Well, definitely. I mean, him and Navarro actually have themselves in very similar situations this year. So it'd be interesting to see what they could do with the extra bats. All right, let's move on to number 10, your second favorite player, Jim. I love him. Alex Rodriguez. 39 years old now. You know, the reason why I back A-Rod, and the other reason is he didn't do anything different than all the other steroid guys, and he got... All besides, he was recruiting them. 
He was like a recruiter of these guys. I mean, I guess you could say that, but they would have done it, man. Basically, he got... I understand, but he he's the one that gave him the connection. He just got so, way more suspended. Anyways. He got a whole season, dude. That was that was extreme. He got more than a whole season. He yeah. missed uh, uh, like all of 2014 and a lot of 2013 from it. Garbage. But look, his career numbers, he's a 299 hitter, a 384 on base, 654 home runs. I always thought he was a 300 hitter. Career. Oh, I mean, well, he, he was little, before the past few yeah. seasons. You look, in 2013, he hit 244. He uh, hasn't hit over 276 since 2009, so it's been a, a pretty long time him hitting well under 300, which still is averages 299, so it was probably up around 310 for a while. But look, his average has dropped off, like I said. His power's down. His power's down. He had seven in 2013. Now, he only had 156 at-bats. But still, in 2012, he had 18. 2011, 16. Before that, he was hitting 30 home runs a year consistently for 13 years straight. He was a hulk. He definitely was. He was a man among boys out there. Another thing that has dropped off with him is his walk rate, but it's still above average. He used to have one of the best walk rates in baseball. It's dropped off a little bit, but it's still better than most players. So he's still a good player if he can stay healthy, stay on the field, but he's not going to give you what he used to at all. I think he's going to do better than what people expect. Not that he's going to hit the 30 jacks or anything, but I could see him hitting 20 jacks. That's probably a ceiling for him, yeah, 20 jacks. I don't see him getting 500 at bats though either, unless he comes straight out and starts killing a ball from the beginning of the season. Any chance he catches Bonds? Highly unlikely. If you could still do steroids. <laughs> if you could still do, if they wouldn't have suspended him and he was just pumping up, probably. Well, I mean, if they didn't start testing for all that now and he could still get away with it, I bet you he'd get it. He could probably still hit 50 if he could still do steroids. I mean, people in the steroid era were hitting 50, 60, 70. Now 30, and you're considered an all-star. So it just shows you how much it really did help hit him out of the park. That and pitchers keep getting better and better. They just keep throwing harder, that's all. Harder it comes in, the harder it goes out. Well, what do we got at number nine? Billy Butler for the A's this year. He spent his entire career with Kansas City from 2007 to 2014. Did he win the World Series with him last year? No, he lost the World Series. Uh, I mean, yeah, they lost. Yes. I was yeah. going to say that would suck to leave right before they actually made it to the World Series. I mean, this, is, this guy's a solid ball player, good hitter. You know, had a little bit of a down year for him last year. You know, just the nine home runs, the 66 RBI. 295 career hitter, though, if he can get back up around there. 359 on base career. That's pretty good. Yeah, he hit just 271 last year with a 323 on base. His walk rate was down from previous years. That's what hurt the on base percentage. But it's surprising. He's only going to be turning 29, so you wouldn't expect his power to drop off like it did. Look, he had a career high 29 jacks in 2012. 47, we knew a hot Asian girl with the last name Butler. Remember her? Yeah, I do. Mm. If you're listening, follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. Listen, he hit 289 or better in six of his eight major league seasons, so he is a good hitter, but he hasn't hit over 300 since 2012, so it has tailed off recently. And I don't expect him to get up around that 295 anymore. Maybe a 280 hitter these days. Change of scenery, give him a big first season maybe? It, it could help with the power for sure because Kansas City's terrible for hitters. Well, Oakland isn't really any better. It, but it's I'll, better I'll take weather. it over KC. I'll it's really definitely a little bit, it's definitely spacious out there in the outfield though. I mean, if he gets back to hitting his doubles though, you know, getting them 40 to 50 doubles a year. I mean, that's always been pretty much his bread and butter. I think it's more realistic, actually, that he bat 290, 300 than he actually hit 20 home runs again. Yeah, I think, well, yeah, you're probably right about that. I mean, he's a I don't good think hitter. he's going to do either one. That's, that's pretty much my point. I think yeah. he'll have a nice on base percentage, hit around 280, maybe 15 jacks tops. That's pretty much it. I mean, well, if he's garbage, then let's move on to number eight, because this dude, I think, has a sweet last name. It's it's actually Crone. Garbage. C.J. Crone, 25 years old for the Angels. Last year was his rookie season. He had just 242 at-bats. 
He hit 256 with the 289 on base. Nothing special there. 11 jacks is pretty nice, though. 37 RBIs, 28 runs. Now, if you look, his walk rate w was pretty bad. He only took 10 walks, and his K rate was higher than what it was in the minors. He had 61 Ks. So I'm thinking he starts to fix that as he gets more time in the bigs. You you look at his minor league career. He hit 290 with a 337 on base, and he showed power. I, I like this guy. I was watching him in the minors, and I actually added him when they, they uh, called him up. Well, Dash, when you spent three seasons in the minors, what did you hit? You mean below Little League, the minor <laughs> league? I hit like 800 in that league. I played in Soutersville, so we had the smallest Little League field ever. Mm, remember I how remember. how small that one was? It, it was, was hard uh, the same as uh, Hermony's, though. No, Both I think it was a couple feet shorter, because in right field, it was real short. All right. Uh, anyways, CJ Crone. He, he was actually not expected to be a full-time DH, but then Hamilton got hurt, and then they had the, he got busted or whatever Blowing with the drugs. Again. Actually, though, I just read that he's not going to face any kind of suspension for that, so he just has to get back healthy, and he can come back. So if you're an addict, you can do drugs and not get suspended? Yeah, I don't know <laughs> what's up with that. Hmm. But I, I still like Crone more than Hamilton these days. Yeah, Hamilton's Crone's on his way up. Hamilton's on his way down. I'd stick with it. Crone if I was the Angels. Now, if if you can find a way for Crone to get some play at first base when Pujols needs a day off, maybe some time in the outfield, Hamilton can play some outfield. Is find Hamilton a way to playing get... at first now predominantly or outfield? Who? Hamilton. Oh, Hamilton don't play first. I was saying Crone can play some oh, first. I'm sorry. Hamilton's an outfielder. That's what the I think. Who plays first base out there? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He's not going to get much time at first unless they, they want to start DH and pool holes, which would be nice for him. Yeah. Keep his legs fresh, give him a little more power at the plate. You got a young guy who can play first base. I don't I don't see any problem who with that. Who else is still a potential gold glover, though, at first, huh? Yeah, he still mm. plays first He'll base. He'll give it to him just because he's over pool holes. Well, I mean, he's always been an above average def Oh, yeah, he's always been good, yeah. He lost, he's lost a little bit of range. I mean, but he still fills his position very well, though. I think Crone's a nice sleeper in fantasy this year, too, though. There it is. What about number seven, Steve Pierce, the Baltimore Orioles? He's going to turn 32 this month. Hit 293 last year with a 373 on base. 21 home runs is pretty nice. Uh, only 49 RBI and 338 at bats. That's not terrible, but it's not great. 40 walks. I mean, that's pretty consistent at the plate. 32 years old. Yeah, he had real nice numbers, actually. And if you look at his career, he's just a 255 hitter with a 335 on base. And we're talking about a guy that's turning 32, like you said. He's never had more than 338 at bats in his career, which came last year. And he's never had more than four home runs in any season before last year. This Played is a former Buckeyes, Pirate. Huh? Yeah. yeah. He, he spent, what, five years with the Pirates? Yeah, five he, long years. <laughs> I mean, Poor guy he, played in the, the bad years. Well, he never could really get a gun in Pittsburgh either. Well, nobody did in those years, Jeff. I mean, come on. Listen, Pierce can play some right field, give Snyder some time off. And listen, they could actually end up platooning because Snyder's a lefty. He hits righties better. If he, if he struggles against lefties, Pierce will play right field against them. And then he could play first base as well. Chris Davis can DH some, give him some time off of the field. There's a lot of ways they can move this lineup around. Buck Showalter knows what he's doing. All right, let's move on to number six. Probably my favorite player on this list outside of our number one guy. Straight out of Minnesota. Kenny's Vargas, 24 years old. Hit 274 with a 316 on base in his rookie season last year. Nine jacks, 38 RBIs, 26 runs in 215 at bats. He K'd a little bit too much, 63 Ks. He didn't take enough walks. He only walked 12 times. I expect him, just like CJ Crone, to get a little bit more experience and start to fix that a little bit. You look at his career minors, he hit 288 with a 367 on base, 59 jacks in. 1,392 at bats. His walk rate was pretty good, a little bit above average, and his K rate wasn't terrible. It's not great, but it's it's good enough where he, this guy can turn into a 30 home run hitter. 24 years old, he's got all kinds of potential. Well, the 19 home runs and 457 at bats and single A advanced to 
couple years ago was nice. I mean, it's a nice indication. I mean, that he's coming into some power. You well, know, look, he had 17 and 356 at bats the next season in Double A. Where so, would he play on the field if he got any time on the field? First base. He can definitely switch off with uh, Maurer if Maurer needs a day off, or if he's can wants the DH for a day if they want to DH him. Vargas can play some first, and I actually expect Vargas to play a good bit of first base this season. There's a lot going on up there in Minnesota. This uh, this is the guy I said they call him the next Big Poppy or Big Poppy Junior or something like that. Mini Poppy. Poppy yeah, Little Vargas. Poppy. Little Poppy. Oh, that's what we're calling him from now on. Kenny's for Little you, uh, Poppy Vargas. Rooting for you, Poppy Vargas. Little PV. Is that, is that a venereal disease? Yep. Burns. <laughs> All right, number five. Which I disagree with horribly. Uh, you could disagree all you want. Adam LaRoche, 35 years old, playing for the White Sox this season. Hit 259 last year, which isn't great. A 362 on base percentage is very nice. Had 26 jacks, 92 RBI, 73 runs. Took 82 walks. Where and are all these stats in Pittsburgh? Oh, you look, man. He had 71 home runs in three years with the Pirates. He had 25, Garbage. 25, and 21. So people that just say, where are these stats? They were there. It was the rest of the team that was garbage. He hit 26. I'm looking for 26. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but listen, he has, last year he had one of the best walk rates in baseball, which was huge. And he still hits power. He's hit double-digit home runs in 10 of 11 years of his career. So it's not like this guy's as bad as everyone in Pittsburgh wants to believe. Good K rate. Yeah, he got hated on because he was supposed to save the franchise. And I mean, nobody could <laughs> save the franchise at that point in time. So He's had 20 or more home runs in nine of his past 10 years. This guy has done it every year. And he's in a gold glove first baseman. So he's going to be playing a lot of first base and giving Abreu some time at DH as well. Well, 47, who do we got at number four? I hear this dude's your favorite. You got a fathead of this guy in your room, right? No, not really. Evan Gaddis. With the Braves, right? Oh, oh wait, no. Astros. He is with the Astros. <laughs> Last year, 263 average, 317 on base percentage, 22 home runs. 52 RBI and 369 at bats. Yeah, yeah, that's that's showing huge power. His K rate is pretty terrible and his walk rate isn't great, but 22 jacks and 369 at bats. Now this guy's going to be moving to a D8 spot instead of having to play between catcher and outfield. He can actually finally get up around 500 at bats in a season. Maybe this guy can hit 30, 35 jacks. Yeah, we'll see. He had a good season last year. The home run rate was good. I mean, you'd like to see him take a little bit more walks. Definitely. And the K rate was uh, a little iffy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But, like I said, he, he spent his first two seasons with the Braves. He had to play a position, obviously, to stay in the lineup. He couldn't get a full season worth of a bat because of it. Go into the Astros. They have nothing going on out there. He can play some outfield if he has to. Play him at DH, give him 500 bats. Let him and pitch, man. Listen, Who cares? they got Chris Carter. <laughs> that guy can hit 35 home runs. Gaddis can hit 30 home runs. They got some power out there. They're starting to put together a, a solid baseball team at Houston. Uh, yeah. Well, Jose Altuve is the man. For the Sandlot. Altuve, and once Correa comes up and... Well, once he comes up, and then they got some tremendous arms in their minor league system. Yeah, I'm liking them. So, I mean, this is a team to, you know, watch well, out I for. I tell you what, they better start spending money when these guys come up and they want to win. Unlike the Pirates, they're actually making a ton of money with their TV deal. They actually, a couple years ago, they made the most money in major league baseball history in one season. And they need to start spending that money because they didn't spend it that year. They, they were the worst team in the league that year. They won like 40 games or something. Where are we at here? We're going to number three. Number Nelson three. Cruz. Yeah, this guy. What a year he had last year, huh? At age 33 and 34. He's going to be turning 35 later this season with the Mariners. He played for Baltimore last year, which always helps because you can crush the ball in that stadium. But he hit 271 with a 333 on base. 40 jacks, 108 RBIs, 87 runs. He took 55 walks and had 140 Ks and 613 at bats. Huge. He's always had some power, hitting 22 plus home runs in each of the past six seasons. 
Hit 33 in, I think, 09. That was his career high before this year. Correct. Believe it. I love how you just come up with those stats somehow. Because I, I know these things. I really like this guy. I really like him going up in Seattle. I mean, it's uh, his home runs titles are going to suffer a little bit. Yeah, there's no way he's going to hit 40 jacks. But, I mean, I, I still think uh, 30 to 35 home runs is realistic for him. I mean, big time power. It's possible. I'm saying more mid, mid-20s, mid to high 20s maybe. But listen, he's never going to give you a high average. The 271 he hit last season was the third best of his career. Well, he's definitely going to be an upgrade over who they've had out there in Seattle, too. Kendrys. Pretty much, yeah. All right, let's move on to number two. Victor Martinez, 36 years old with the Tigers, hit 335 last year, 409 on base, 32 jacks, 103 RBIs, 87 runs. He took 70 walks and had 42 Ks. This guy's always been a great hitter, but the 32 home runs last year, Came wow. out of nowhere, yeah. Wow. That's all I got to say. Yeah, I don't expect that again. And look, he's hurt. He, They still say he could be ready for opening day. It looks like he's. it's going to take another week or two. But he's going to be back early enough to make a difference for this team. The way ESPN was talking, they don't really expect him to miss much of the regular season at all. That's what I'm saying. And that's a very big plus for Detroit because of how big of a bat this guy actually has. But look, the 32 home runs, like we were saying, it was a bit too much. It's not going to happen year after year. But he hit only 20 home runs once from 2008 to 2013, and obviously missing 2012. You know, with a career high of 25 in 2007. Before last year, yeah. So, so yeah, he's he's more of a 20 home run guy. He's still going to hit for a pretty good average. He's a 306 career hitter, and he's always going to have a high on base, which helps. He's probably, 87 runs is probably a lot too because, I mean, he's not that quick around the bases. I could see a lower total there. The RBIs could stay up over 100, though. Hitting the lineup with Cabrera helps out, right? Yes, Cabrera obviously helps out. They brought over Cespedes. There's three hitters right there that should get the job done for him. Who's the other play? Castellanos, is that what his name is? Yeah, Nick Castellanos. Nick, Nick Castellanos. He, be nice to he see needs him to break, break out. out. Yeah. Break out. But listen, until Victor Martinez is ready, they could play Alex Avila at DH and put Brian Holiday as the catcher until Martinez is ready. And Avila, he's hurt a lot, so it would be good to get him some time at DH during the season. Maybe it would be nice to play Victor Martinez at first base and give Avila time at DH, but then what are you going to do with Cabrera? Because if Cabrera's out, you're going to want him to DH. And obviously, you don't want to take Cabrera out of the lineup at all. Ever. Triple crown winner. But I'm just worried about Avila. I don't think he's going to last behind the plate, and they need to find a way to keep him in the lineup somehow. Give him steroids. No? No, it's not worth it. 47, would you do steroids? If no. You, if you were in it looks MLB like you player. already did him. <laughs> That's he just, funny. He just eats bullets. That's all. Yeah, I shot myself in the foot, remember? That's right. Instead of taking pain pills, he just ate a bullet. Made him feel better. Delicious. All righty. Let's move on to the final one. Who do we got? Number one, David Ortiz. Big poppy. I'm keeping him at number one. I don't care if his average went down last year. He's 39, still with the Red Sox. He's got charisma, yo. Hit just 263 last year, but his on base percentage was still pretty good 355. Still hit 35 jacks, had 104 RBIs. He only scored 59 runs because he doesn't get around the bases very well. And later in the game, if he gets a single or something or a double, they put in a pinch runner for him so they can score another run and not just let him trot around the bases. He's oozing machismo. Still gets the bat around pretty well, though. Yeah, excellent K rate, excellent walk rate. 35 home runs at 39 years old. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Isn't it, though? He said he's been tested for steroids like 80 times in the last 10 years. And then I read an article that explained the steroid testing process, which I'm not going to go into in great detail. But it said, basically, if that's true and he's not over-exaggerating, then he has had to have tested positive for a banned substance at one point or another because the most you would get tested would be four times a year. So, unless you tested positive for something. 
So four times ten is not eighty. Well, if he did get busted at one point, it was probably between two thousand four and two thousand six when he had forty one, forty seven, fifty four home runs in three straight seasons. He had double digit home runs <laughs> in each of the past fifteen years, twenty or more each of the past thirteen years. That's production, yo. Call it all this fifty four home runs. He did it to himself, unless he's over exaggerating. He nobody knew how many times he had been tested. He, he went out and said it. And another great thing about him, 70 walks or more in each of the past 11 years. So he's better than Ryan All but Howard. once, excuse me, all but once in the past 11 years. Very good clutch Ryan player. Howard? He's better than Ryan Howard. Oh, my God. It's not even close. Ryan Howard in his prime or Big Poppy now? Uh, Ryan Howard. Well, listen... <laughs> For one season, though, because Ortiz, really uh, Ortiz really produces in the playoffs. I don't care. Ryan Howard had 50-some jacks in his prime. I think 58 home runs, I think. Was yeah. Home run. And he was hitting over 300. Ortiz, he's hit over 300 or better since from 2011 to 2013. Last year, it went down to 263. I don't expect him to hit 300 anymore. Maybe he can get up around 275, but listen, he's 39 years old. He's not going to be able to hit 300 forever. But the power's still there. But yes, Ryan Howard over David Ortiz, if Ryan Howard was in his prime. All right, 47, let's get a rundown, wrap it up. Start him at 15. Number 15, Kendris Morales from the Royals. Number 14, the owner of the Blue Jays DH spot, the owner Navarro. Number 13, you got my boy Nick Swisher for the Indians. Swisher sweet. Believe it. Number 12, Mitch Moreland from the Texas Rangers. Son of a Mitch. Number 11, John Jasso. Jasso, correct. Number Tampa. 10. Steroid boy, Alex Rodriguez for the Yankees. The recruiter. Number Isn't that a movie? <laughs> Maybe. Wait, was it about a Rod? Either way, it was the recruit. It's called the recruit. Never mind. Not the recruiter. It would be Denzel Washington, though. No, it was uh, Colin Farrell. No, I'm saying the recruiter would be Denzel. Yeah, he'd be a good recruiter. Number nine. Waiting on your hand and foot, Billy Butler. Number eight, I wish your last name was Cron, C.J. Crone. Number seven, ex-Bucko, Steve Pierce. Number six, my second favorite player on the list, Kenny Vargas. Number five, highly overrated, Adam LaRoche for the White Sox. Right, Dash? Overrated? You're dead, bro. Number four, a breakout player this year, possibly, Evan Gaddis. Number three, Nelson Cruz, Seattle Mariners. Cruise to victory. Number two, Victor, I've fallen and I can't get up. Martinez for the Tigers. And number one, we'll always love Big Poppy, David Ortiz. I love it when they call me Big Poppy. Well, that wraps up our ALDH segment. I want to thank you guys for coming in studio. I want to thank you fans for listening. You guys can follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. Follow me on Twitter at bet Jim to win. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to that YouTube channel. I believe we're at 97 subscribers. We're getting close to 100. Let's times that by 1,000, and then we're where we need to be. Good luck.